Hello YouTube. I feel so blessed, you know, after posting that uh, that call out. Like, you know, if you have any questions, please do ask. I'm getting reactions. So, um, uh, and I got a question from Chris Edwards. Um, let me read that. Um, he says, uh, Chris says, hey Tom, since I bought a Tundra, I've seen loads of comments about it tip stalling at low speed. Mm -hmm. That's what a Tundra does. Is there anything you do to reduce the possibility of this happening with either setup or flying style? Thanks, Chris Edwards. Thanks, Chris. That's a good question. Um, I'm going to give you a short answer. And then after that, I'm going to give you a longer answer, which will actually involve me talking about aerodynamics. Um, I think it's really useful to understand a bit of the aerodynamics of an airplane to understand what happens in certain certain situations and the stall is one of those situations so uh, it's gonna get technical later on um, uh, but bear with me because you know understanding what your plane does is a huge part of improving your flying so as for your question um, is there anything I do in terms of setup to... Um, it has two parts, right, your question. So the first part was, is there anything I do in terms of setup of the plane to um, prevent a tip stall? Um, no. No. Uh, every plane has its own characteristics. Every plane will... Um, stall at a certain point there is one thing you can do um with the tundra. well there's probably more you can do with the tundra but one easy thing you can do with the tundra to make it stall at an even lower speed uh, which is um an, a really easy thing to do which is change out if you have a new version change out those rubbery tires for the old foam tires because that'll save you 8% on the total weight. And a stall is nothing, really nothing more than the amount of lift generated not being sufficient anymore to support the weight of the plane, right? So if you bring down the weight of the plane, you can bring down the speed that it can stay afloat at. So that's something. So basically, if you want to bring the stall speed down um, you can always try to bring the weight down um, and find ways to do that um, and quite often you know that has it, its limits because you know if you start carving away foam that'll eat at the structure of the plane at some point and you can you can fly thunder with a uh, I typically fly it with a 2200 milliamp 3s battery you could fly it with a thousand milliamp battery but then you'll have a flight time of two minutes you know so it's it's like you, you have to weigh options against each other um, then the second part of your question was um, what about flying style well yeah there's something before I get too technical um, let me uh, just quickly explain what to do so um, a in airplanes in actual airplanes when you get training in actual airplanes they always will tell you a hundred thousand times speed is life right meaning if you don't have the speed you don't have the lift and you'll fall out of the, out of the sky eventually um, so um, when you are flying really slow with a tundra be on the lookout because a tundra and some other planes warbirds have that as well um, a number of planes they will stall quickly and violently and that's what a tundra does it's able to fly really slow really slow and then if you push it just too far it'll go oof, and it's gone so really be on the lookout because a number of planes will start shaking a bit or wing rocking a bit you know and you'll just see this looks off i think i'm going too slow um and there you have some time to react and the thing with the tundra is the reaction time is just slower you know one minute you're flying really slow and it looks cool and the other minute the other second you're you know you're stalling 
Um, so one tip number one is be when you're flying really slow be really trigger happy on the throttle be ready to give extra power to speed up um, and two when it goes um, well train yourself in steering with your rudder because and I'll explain this is gonna be a long video I'll explain why later but um, when you are stalling your ailerons are pretty much useless and you can save yourself with rudder input um, so if my left wing drops if i give right rudder i still have a chance to save my plane in combination with getting speed changing the angle of attack uh, but we'll talk more about that um, later on um, basically what you're doing at that point when you're flying with the rudder um, maybe check out my video on that's a 3d tutorial on harriers in 3d what you do in those low and slow maneuvers is basically basically flying post stall so you're flying in a configuration where your wing isn't supporting the weight of the plane anymore and you're catching that with your with your propeller and um, in Harrier you actually make your corners with the rudder and the rudder is much more effective than the ailerons at that point um, so you can save yourself with the rudder um, and that takes some practice so be ready to throttle out be ready to reduce the angle of attack and uh, be ready to use your rudder and that's basically the only thing you can do so don't go too slow <laughs> with the tundra um, easy as that now um, more advanced if you think okay this is it for me that's fine go ahead you know close the video go watch something else enjoy your YouTube experience but if you think okay I want to know a bit more about what a stall is and, and how that works in terms of aerodynamics all right here we go so um, I've got my wing here and typically when a plane is flying you'd say that the wind comes pretty much from the front they, you call that relative wind the relative wind is the wind relative to the direction of your wing and typically your wing will be tilted slightly up ever so slightly um, um, and what you see is you should see it like this right so your plane is moving through the air and they're like two little particles particles of air and they're friends with each other right so what happens is they get hit and they get separated from each other because one will go over the top and one will go over the bottom and what you see then is that the one and they want to meet up behind this wing right so what you see then is that because of the shape of the wing that this top particle needs to travel more distance than this bottom particle but they want to arrive there at the same time you know because yeah you know, plane passes through um, um, yeah so the particle on the top because it needs to cover more distance it will have to accelerate and that's exactly what happens and that's called the Venturi effect um, a Venturi tube is actually a tube going like this Whoop. that gets um, uh, narrower right and that's how they actually can you can see tests of this they push air through through and what you will see happening with sensors is that in this middle part you know air will um, accelerate actually um, and basically if you have these other layers of air above basically you have the same thing right basic basically because of the shape of this wing passing through it gets narrower and then it gets wider again so at this point above the uh, wing the speed of these air particles passing over will be the fastest and um, uh, that actually creates and you can see that in tests with a venturi tube that creates a 
area with lower pressure, right? And on the bottom of the wing, you have an area with higher pressure, lower pressure. So, um, why does a plane fly? Uh, some people maybe think that it's laying on top of the air. Some people think that it sticks to the air above. And actually, um, it's a combination of both. It's a low pressure area on top of the wing, high pressure area. Um, below the wing um, and that makes your plane fly now this is in a normal situation now what happens what happens in a stall actually fast forward all right that was a bit of a fast forward so um, what happens in a stall basically in a stall your wing stops producing enough lift right and usually you see higher angles of attack right so the relative wind is coming from the this is all relative you know you can did you know that you can stall while the plane is in this position towards the horizon and that it can be stalling you know that because you've stalled the plane already and you actually did just that um, but anyway what happens here is air passes this way air passes this way gets in trouble sticking on to the the airfoil to the wing and then basically detaches and what you'll have is you know all kinds of turbulence um, in this part of the wing right all right now um, the thing with a tip stall is, is that it actually really doesn't exist it's just one wing stalling just before the other one does. Um, now what happens in a stall is, um, at some point, you know, the amount of lift generated will be less than the weight of the plane. So you can't, it can't keep horizontal. And what changes is, basically at that point, it gets worse quickly because the relative wind, because your plane is falling, you could see that as falling or you could see that as I still have some forward speed, but I also have like a part of relative wind coming from the bottom because you're falling on top of that, right? So basically this is a, um, you saw vectors in school, right? So basically the relative wind vector in a stall will be more like this, creating an even bigger problem because now that changes and you know, with it, it the air starts detaching even further towards the front of the profile and your stall um, um, is complete and you're really falling out of the sky and typically then nose comes down you have to pick up speed you need that speed um, and then plane starts flying again and you recover unless you are too close to the ground now um, about speed right why is speed so important well this is going pretty far, but the lift formula, the actual formula for calculating the amount of lift that a wing generates in a, in, um, um, in a specific set of circumstances is L equals half rho S uh, CL V squared. What's all of this? L is lift equals half of rho is um, basically the atmospheric conditions that's humidity air pressure um, uh, temperature of the ambient air the air that you're flying in right uh, then s is the surface of your wing so the amount of surface cl is the lift coefficient so that's basically different for every type of uh, wing profile you know, you have symmetrical wing profiles. You see that on 3D planes and aerobatic planes. And then you have these really sleek profiles and then you have really big, you have all kinds of them and they have different properties and they have um, their own use, you know? So like the really, really thin profiles, you will see that on jets, for instance. Um, and I'll explain why as well, because if you see, you have two forces working on um, 
uh, well, basically you have three forces working on a wing, right? So if I have a wing, whoop, whoop, then I have one force pointing up is lift, one force pointing down, which is gravity. So that's the weight of the plane, and then you have a force working to the back, which is drag, and what we need is to counter drag is throttle. So these are like the four forces on an airfoil, right? Where was I my story actually? Uh, oh yeah, about that. Um, oh, that was about CL. I was talking about CL. Lift coefficient. So that varies. That's specific to every uh, different type of wing shape. And then, here you go, this is the only square you see here, V stands for velocity. So, if you take this formula, there is only one square in um, this equation, which, you know, you don't have to be a mathematician to understand that this part of the formula is one of, is the most important aspect of this formula. Or, if you change this one, you'll change the amount of lift the most, right? So that's why speed is important. Now, um, this is what a stall looks like. And then typically, if you stall your plane, right? You stall it, nose will come. If, if it stalls symmetrically, then the nose will fall down. You'll probably throttle out, pick up speed. That speed will give you enough lift to get level again. There you go, you recovered, you're not in a stall anymore. Now a tip stall, that's where one of the wings will go first and then you'll fall out like that. Now, why does the why isn't the aileron very effective in the stalled wing at that point? Well, if my left wing, if my left wing will drop, let's see left wing, right? What I would typically want to do is give right aileron, right? And what happens if you give right aileron? Right aileron means on the right wing, my aileron will go up. And on the left wing, my aileron will go down. Now look at this drawing behind me, right? So I have this relative wind, yeah? And the angle Look at the angle. No, this is bad drawing. I'm sorry. I'll go again. So this is basically the angle my wing is at. And this is the angle of the relative wind. So this is the angle of attack, right? Now what happens if I get that in this um, example, that left aileron down. That means that oh yeah, that's maybe exaggerated but that basically the average angle of, of attack of my wing versus the relative wind will get even higher so with giving that left uh, sorry right aileron in order to compensate for the left tip stall I'll make my problem even worse. This this sounds um, it, it it sounds like like it's off, but you know think about it. If I want to compensate for wing dropping, the aileron movement I will use will let the aileron of that wing go down, and that aileron of that wing going down will actually change the angle of attack of that wing, of an already stalled wing, to an even worse situation. And that's why ailerons are pretty much useless right at the moment of stall. Only when you pick up speed you can recover, because then, you know, if you pick up speed, nose goes down, you fix that angle of attack, right? So if my relative wind was here, that's why you want to point the nose down. You're actually pointing your nose and your wing back onto that relative wind you have and then your plane will work as normal right okay so now why does rudder work well 
why does rudder work? Look at my plane like this, right? So suppose this wing drops. This top wing is dropping. Now, if I counter that, so this wing drops. If I counter that with um, rudder, what will actually happen, and I wanted to show you like this, what happens in any turn, this, the outside wing in a turn will have to cover more distance. And if you have to cover more distance in the same time, you're speeding up. So the outside wing, when you use rudder, the outside wing will cover more distance, will have more speed. And look at that lift formula again, speed equals lift. So if you want to add lift in a stall to the wing that's dropping, you can give it more speed with the rudder. So that's why using the rudder in a stall, they actually teach real pilots, you know, to steer their plane during a stall with the rudder. And this is why. Um, and it's really fun to experiment with that. If you have a trainer, you know, any plane with some nice dihedral in there, you can fly them with rudder alone. And the idea behind that is, if you fly them with rudder alone, they'll they'll start banking, you know? You know, the Robert Charter, the Westerly, the, um, um, what was that again? Uh, Taxi 2, I learned to fly with that. The Calmado, um, the, 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 well, even all those gliders, you know, the Easy Stars and the, and the Big Slurs and the, all of those planes, you can fly them on rudder alone. And when you apply rudder, your turn won't be a flat turn like that. No, they'll start rolling, right? And why do they start rolling? You're not doing anything to these surfaces of, these wing, of, of the wing, you know? So you're not using ailerons and still they start rolling. Why do they start rolling? It's simple aerodynamics, baby. If you give one wing more speed than the other wing, you give that wing more lift than the other wing and it starts rolling, right? So in a stall, induce that roll, that opposite roll with the rudder instead of with ailerons because ailerons will increase your problem and rudder will decrease your problem. And there are actually a lot of planes. Um, that's why, let me, let me just explain this and then I'm gonna quit this video because I've been talking way too technical for quite some time now. But ever wonder why on some planes and especially the ones with longer wings or biplanes, um, they tend to look nicer in a corner when you add rudder. See that? So let me take a left hand corner and on some planes you see them almost slipping through the corner and then if you add your a bit of left rudder in that turn, that turn will look coordinated, will look better. Why is that? You know, um, that's a different thing we haven't talked about, but I'm going to give you another fast forward. There you go. I'm going to give you a second formula. And that second formula that looks suspiciously like the first one. Look. D stands for drag equals What the hell? That's the same formula. Only I changed the L with the D. That's exactly correct. The formula for drag is basically exactly the same as the formula for lift but instead of looking at the amount of lift an airfoil produces it looks at the amount of drag an airfoil produces and that's why a jet has a very sleek wing why because it travels at far higher speeds and fatter profiles give you more drag while fatter profiles at slow speed, they give you enough lift. But because a jet is flying really fast, it doesn't need that fat profile to have enough Venturi in there to generate lift. So the profile doesn't have to generate that much lift at slow speed because it's flying at high speeds anyway. And speed is really important, you know, because it's, it's, it's a square. So 
um, um, that's why a jet has a sleeker profile because then you mainly look at drag right okay so um, um, now to the question of then why does a why does that happen right why does why why do I need to add some rudder in some corners well that has everything to do with drag because we just said that in a corner the outside wing will have to travel more distance than the inside wing which means that the outside wing will have more speed than the inside wing and now here it comes that's why the outside wing also has more drag than the inside wing so basically because it has more speed it will start you know slipping the plane a little bit and the shorter the wings are the less you'll see that the longer the wings are or if you have a biplane you have two of them that generate drag you know that's when you'll need it glider pilots have to actual glider pilots and rc glider pilots will have to use rudder in every turn why they their wings are huge you know so the momentum is incredible because you know this this model has short wings so the extra amount of distance that this outside wing has to uh, travel is kind of not too bad but if you have really long wings you know suppose these wings were double the double the the length you know then that outside wing would have to make an enormous you know amount of make up for an enormous amount of distance pick up enormous amount of speed and pick up an enormous amount of drag in the process so in your turn the tail will go down you know it'll start slipping and then you need to add some rudder to have a coordinated turn again this was a really really long story chris i know but i think it might help you understand more what happens you know when a plane stalls what happens in a tip stall which doesn't happen it's just a stall which, which doesn't exist it's just a stall where when it's a really critical profile like a tundra at too low a speed uh, where one wing will stall already and the other one won't um hope this was helpful it sure was long so we kept you off the streets for a while hope you liked it if you have more questions throw them over the fence uh, you can reach me in any comment on any video or on facebook as well um so that's that's it for me for tonight talk to you guys later see you later thanks for watching Bye.